Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to the first uh, night at accessatrader.com a uh, nightly update of uh, 2024. I uh, hope everybody is having a great, great uh, holiday season. I, I want to wish everybody once again uh, a very happy uh, and healthy, right? Happy and healthy uh, new year for 2024 uh, and beyond. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, spending some time uh, with us. Uh, if you like the content, uh, if you like the daily unbiased jargon, uh, all we ask is, again, guys, take a second, uh, click a like, uh, share with your friends, uh, comment. Tell us how you're doing. Uh, tell us your, about your trading style. Tell us about anything that can potentially help uh, the, you know, the consumers of technical analysis get better. And that's what we all are trying to get better uh, every single day uh, if you are on your year one, if you are going into year uh, you know, 200 <laughs> or anything in between, uh, again, share your experiences. You never know uh, when it's going to help uh, somebody else. So let's talk about today. Uh, obviously, uh, over the you know over the weekend, uh, if you logged in at any point on social media, you would see euphoria through the heavens. People who were trading six months a year. This is our year, bro. This is it. This is it. This is it. That's great. You know, again, if you're a byproduct of uh, the 2023 rabid market explosion, uh, NASDAQ was up, uh, Qs were up 54%. Uh, it's easy to kind of uh, dive headfirst into uh, the Kool-Aid, right? Uh, but the, the problem is, we talked about this uh, on, the, on the weekend video is, Problem is we're up 54%, right? And by no stretch of the imagination was it a slam dunk, a given, or anything else in between uh, that we were going to continue this massive rally. Um, you know, was it possible that we could get a decline for the year of 10, 12, 14%? Everything's on possible. Everything's on the table. But like I said on the weekend video, even if we would retrace back, you know, 12, 14% for the year, we're still net up about 40% in a two-year cycle, which is super duper bullish. And the one thing that we did see today, uh, very quickly, the whole euphoric uh, dude, right? Dude and bro, uh, you know, we're going to make a killing this year. Uh, all that enthusiasm, all that euphoria died quickly on Vine pre-market. Uh, when you woke up this morning, uh, Apple got a pretty, a pretty ugly downgrade today with a price target of 160 um, You know, down a lot. At one point, uh, it was down almost nine dollars in the day. I, I I don't remember the last time uh, Apple was down nine bucks non uh, earnings day. So that obviously had an incredible ripple effect uh, throughout technology. And again, this market doesn't need news. The, the the point is people are trying to find what was the news that sparked the salt. Guys, we're up fifty four percent in two thousand twenty three. It does the market doesn't need news. Uh, to have a, a a a pullback, and that's what we got today. Very very uh, aggressively, uh, Tesla was the second big uh, was another big story today. They came out with uh, their I believe it was their fourth quarter uh, delivery numbers. They looked great. They looked absolutely great, right? They looks like you know very very bullish, uh, very bullish on their report. But but again, when the market uh, when the market ticks down and the market gets dragged down, you know, and, and no report is going to help you, right? And the majority of the day, uh, Tesla did a you know decent job today, not giving you know a whole lot back today. But the point is, again, it's still swept up uh, in the curb, you know, in in the selling curb. So the question is, what happens, right? And you know, there's an old adage, uh, you know, again, one of the many wives' tales that spread on social media. Uh, and spread throughout the years, and uh, this is it, right? However the market goes in the first week, it's a really good glance of what the market's going to do the rest of the year. Guys, I, I, I promise you that's not the case, okay? If you guys remember last year, uh, the first two, three weeks, there was selling, selling, selling. We were up 54% of the year. The same way people talk about Fridays. I never trade Fridays. It's the worst day of the week. 
Well, Friday is usually my best day of the week because Fridays are usually option expiration and there's a high probability that deep out of the money call or put buyers, depending which way the market is going, they're going to push that stock in that, in that direction with institutional money flow. So there's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff, a lot of theories, there's a lot of myths. Uh, guys, every single year is different. Every single start of the year is absolutely different. Um, coincidence does not make it um, you know, a, 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 a solid concrete wall of information. Uh, everything is completely different. Having said that, we have to look at the data, okay? And this is what the data is telling me from today. If you watch the weekend video, we talked about kind of this, you know, area of 40750s was the 10 day moving average. This is last night's video. Uh, 40750s was kind of the little baby line in the sand, not to the whole uh, formation of the whole euphoric bull market, but just kind of short term, right? A short term uh, situation. What we saw this morning was very different than we saw the previous year. What I mean by that is we got a gap down today significantly below the previous channel, right? And the craziest part about that was there was absolutely no fight, literally no fight. There was nobody buying the dip. There was no put you know any type of resistance uh, from the bulls. They just basically just kind of rolled over and died. And if you look at uh, the 60 minute view, right? This was the whole day, right? This was the whole day, literally the whole day. The market gap down, kept on going down, little rally here, you know, double top got rejected, went down, tested the 20 day moving average, and then bounced again. And if you look at where we closed today, we did, cl we did test the 20 day moving average. We went through it and reclaimed it on the close. So at least now going into tomorrow's session or the, or the day after, because this, again, it's very possible that we can have an inside day tomorrow. What I mean by an inside day is, especially if you're you're brand new to uh, technical analysis, an inside day, basically, if it fits, becomes a dead cat bounce tomorrow, it's not going to take out the high of the day. It's not going to take out the low of the day. It's going to be literally on the inside candle of today's channel. And that's not what the bulls want to see. What the bulls want to see is a, a very early aggression, okay, and start building above the pr today's previous highs. Now, again, before you say it's impossible, well, this is the stock market. This has still been the rabbit stock market we've seen from 2003. Just because the calendar and the date is showing us 2024 doesn't mean we, can, we can't easily reclaim back today's channel and start going back to the five and 10 day moving average. However, there's a flip side of that as well. And this is kind of where you really understand that the dynamics that, hey, gravity is real, right? Gravity is real. We don't have to have a, a bounce and reclaim today's channel gravity is real. And if we start losing the 20 day moving average, and right now the low of that 200 day moving, 20 day moving average is $400 and 24 cents. That's today's lows. So if the bears start reclaiming back today's lows and start building in any close below 400, that's when you have a problem. Not for me, not for anybody who trades both sides of the market, but if you're a perma bull, right? If you're a perma bull, a buy the dip, no matter what, bro, uh, and nothing will happen, nothing bad will happen because I'll keep continue buying the dip. Number one, revert back to 2022 and tell me that worked really well. But number two, if we do get a close below 400 bucks uh, on the queues, then you can see it, right? The whole, the whole premise of the PS60 theory is stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So here was a, a perfect example of stocks trading from demand, right? Closed on Friday, the 10-day moving average, trade to the next demand zone, which is the 20-day and held. So any close below 400 on the queues, well, the next demand zone is 390, right? 390. It's not a misprint. Uh, it's 10 points on the queues. Again, I, I know for those who started in 2023 and, and enjoyed this incredible magic carpet ride, you say, well, there's no way that's going to happen. The buyer is going to come back and buy the dip. Well, they weren't there today, right? They weren't there today. And the whole point is if we do close below 400, maybe we'll go on a, on a straight line, but below 400, 390 uh, is the next uh, support. So kind of give you guys a little bit of a fact that what the bulls need to do tomorrow is to reclaim today's highs and the bears need to confirm today's lows for more selling. Uh, and as you can imagine today with this, you know, you know, big, big move down with the queues. At one point, they were down 2%. They closed a, a little less than, I think it was down 1.6%. 1 yeah, 1.6%. They closed down 240 points. As you can imagine, Anything that rallied, anything the Nasdaq 100 that rallied, uh, got hit. You know, got absolutely hit. I mean, look at you know, look at Netflix got murdered today on Nvidia. Great job for all you guys who caught the pivot on Nvidia. 
went about seven, eight dollars. Tesla gave up its gains. You know, gave us a nice little move down downside at the open. Uh, all of them, everything got hit today. Amazon, Meta, you you name it. They they you know they, they basically had it. So today's line with sand is obviously applicable uh, going into tomorrow's channel for technology. However, however, not all was grip, right? Uh, there was plenty of market, uh, plenty of money going into other names. Just because money got pulled from technology doesn't mean necessarily mean all the time that the market needs to get pulled everywhere. Usually it does. Usually it's a very uniform either selling or buying. But the good point for the bulls, right? If, you, if there is a glass half full kind of point of view of a bullish bias going into tomorrow's session is what the other stocks did, what other groups did. And if you look at some of the other groups, you'll kind of get it, right? Look at, you know, look at the banks, right? Banks had a really, really strong day today. Citibank uh, went nuts. Goldman Sachs, highest close in this whole formation. Looks like it's going higher. Really good move there. You had the casino stocks, right? Casino names, really, really strong today. Look at Wynn, right? Wynn, really big move today. Wynn is actually one day away from reclaiming the 150-day moving average. Look at Las Vegas Sands, right? Las Vegas Sands, big, big multi-month move today. Really, really strong there as well. Look at the consumer cyclical names. They might not be something that you're going to day trade, right? But look at the consumer cyclical names. Kellogg, right? They make cereal. Procter & Gamble, right? Another big move up on Procter & Gamble. Again, not sexy looking charts, but the point is the rotation went into those names. Look at the biotech names today, right? Look at names like Avi. Look at the move on Avi today. We had this thing over the weekend. Uh, for all you guys who traded it today, great job, right? Look at Abby, went nuts today. Look at a name like Incy, right? Had a big breakout today. Both those names uh, need to, you know, if you're a biotech trader, they deserve your attention, especially into uh, any week open. Look at a name like Hims, right? You guys know Hims. Come on, you know Hims, right? The ED company for him and her, the ED company, you know Hims and hers. And that's what she said. That's what I said, right? Look at the stock here. It's, you know, really big aggressive breakout here as well. So there's definitely areas of bullish action going into tomorrow's session. Um, I'm in. Uh, I am a, a mega cap, uh, mega cap technology trader. So I really don't care about the rest of these stocks. But the point is, I am definitely watching the Qs tomorrow. Uh, I'm watching Tesla. If Tesla can't rally tomorrow and starts losing this bottom channel, could have more weakness. I'm watching the video for tomorrow. Keep this in mind, like I said a few minutes ago, there's a very good chance that we do have an inside day, quote unquote, dead cat bounds day. If that's the case, then we'll definitely be playing ranges, being a little bit more patient tomorrow. But if the Qs start confirming back down and start losing 400 and stay below 400, we will have uh, a second day of selling bias. That's it, guys. That's it. Now that the euphoria, uh, the all of the, you know, the whole, we're going to kill it, bro, uh, this year, and all the, you know, and all the, you know, all the other stuff that people were so excited for going into today's trading session. Now that it's out of the way, that's it. Today's just another trading day like every, everything else. Tomorrow, back to business. Again, technical analysis over everything. And as long as you embrace that, technical analysis will embrace you. Guys, have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. God bless. Welcome to 2024. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.